come as gift cards, very popular as gift cards. How many of you have received a gift card? I won't ask you if you've given one. And the gift cards you received last year, do you still have them or did you actually use them? Since 2005, 45 billion, that's billion with the B, in unused gift cards. The average American home, there's $300 of gift cards in your home. You now have figured out how you're going to complete your Christmas shopping today. I'm a fan of gift cards myself. A couple years ago, I was shopping for a pool vacuum. And uh, I was looking for the best price. And the one that had the best price also came with this perk, a $40 Visa gift card. So I got the pool vacuum. I filled out all the paperwork. That's one way you lose them, I think. And four weeks later, came the gift card. I put it away in a special place. You would have thought I would have used it for our next date with Sharon or birthday or anniversary or vacation, but it was three years later, I decided, I think I'm going to use this gift card. We were going on vacation, went to a little nicer place than we did, usually went for a snack, and uh, I pulled out my $40 gift card and handed it to the guy, and he goes, this is absolutely zero balance on it. Turns out it was a rebate gift card, and uh, other gift cards don't have an expiration date. Those do. G gifts are given to be used, to be experienced, to celebrate. The gift we celebrate today of Jesus is meant to be experienced and, and worshipped, to, to be embraced and, and to be loved, and most of all, to be shared. Uh, look at the message insert in your order of service. I invite you to take notes on uh, this morning's message. Look what it says here in Luke chapter 2, verses 11. This is what the angels say. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. As we get ready to receive what Christ gives, let's first go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, the great gift of Christmas. Lord Jesus, thank you for all that you give, forgiveness, life, and salvation. Holy Spirit, open our hearts this night to receive the gift of Christmas and to share all Christ gives with others. Oh God, make our hearts generous like your heart. As we hear the story, make us like the shepherds, part of the story in sharing all Christ gives. We praise you this day for the wonder of Christmas and the greatest wonder of all, your work to transform our hearts to give all Christ give. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When you're doing what you do right now, when you get, get beyond the, the hype of Christmas and, and start to move to the hope of Christmas, you, you discover a whole new level of Christmas. The, the hype of Christmas leads to stress. It leads you to, to just wish you could get the holiday over with and, and get some kind of a break. But, but the hope of Christmas, that, that leads to a Savior. That, that leads to one who, who was born in this world and and who gives the greatest gift, not, not under the tree, but on a tree. That Jesus came into this world. He paid for the price of all that we've done that's wrong against God and against each other, against all the, what we failed to do that would have helped others and helped our relationship with God. And he paid that price that we might have life with God. You and I are invited to experience the hope of Christmas, all that Jesus brings to us. And that's what the shepherds do. They come to the manger. They see the miracle. But they don't stop there. They understand that what, what God gives, he invites us to give to others. Look what happens here in Luke chapter 2, verse 17. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them, about this child. What Christ gives, the shepherds give. They give the story of good news. They, they give the story of transformation that Jesus brings. And, and everybody loves a good story, especially one that's built on a generous heart. Just think of uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. A recent movie called The Man Who Invented Christmas talks about how Charles Dickens went about the process of writing a Christmas carol. 
It was 1843. He was pressed financially. He, he needed a hit. He'd had two books that were not hits, and he, he needed to generate some income. And he was walking from his nice neighborhood in London, and he, he started walking down the street. He, he crossed the river. He got to kind of the other side of town, and there was the slum area of London. And as he thought about what he loved about Christmas and what might help these people, he, he came up with this idea to tell the story that's read in A Christmas Carol. To tell the story of this miserly man who experiences these ghosts or spirits at Christmas whose life is transformed. It's amazing what, what happens when you begin to understand what generosity uh, is all about. As he felt that inspiration, he, he, he had a change of heart. At first, it was a kind of a calculated plan. How, how can I make some money? And then as he wrote the story, he, he realized he, he wanted to give a gift. He wanted to provide something special for the people of London, to, to, to recapture the, the Christmas spirit, which, which he perceived had, had declined uh, in his day. And so he, he writes a book. He writes an incredible book. Uh, he packages it specially. It kind of got a red cover. It's got a little color inside. It's got pictures drawn in there. And he prices it at a very low price in his day. And amazingly, the first edition... 6,000 copies, sells out in six days. He's amazed by what happens. He doesn't get the financial windfall he thought, but that would come later. But he did discover a new way to look at Christmas, one that speaks of what God gives, one that speaks of generosity. A follower of Jesus named Paul writes to a friend of his named Titus. Uh, look what he says here in the third chapter of his letter to Titus in verses 4 and 5. When the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. In Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Scrooge experiences the, the three ghosts. You, past, present, and future, right? Yep, past, present, and future. They impact him. They change him. They, they transform him. In A Christmas Carol, Scrooge says this. Let me read it to you. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three will strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. And later, Scrooge is described this way in the story. It was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well. If any man alive possess the knowledge. When Jesus Christ gives us new life, and that's what he comes to do, he transforms our hearts. He invites us to experience this, this amazing grace, which is just a fancy word for gift. The amazing grace of God that, that gives us new life. He speaks to us in our past experiences. He speaks to us and gives us power in our present moments. And he guides us to a future in heaven. The same God who, who knew what 2017 would hold is the same God who knows what's coming ahead in 2018. He knows our past. He's with us in our present. He will guide us to the future. A Paul letter says this in verses 6 and 7. About Jesus, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs of having the hope of eternal life. It's the hope of Christmas. It's not the hype. It's the hope that leads us to be generous people, that leads us to respond by, with generous hearts. Scrooge goes from being gruff to gracious because he's empowered by a generous spirit. There's a transformation that happens within him. The new Scrooge, he changes. All of a sudden, he's got a passion for his worker, Bob Cratchit's family. 
He cares for Tiny Tim. He anonymously buys them the largest turkey available. How many of you are having turkey today or tomorrow? That's a, that's a Charles Dickens thing. It used to be geese. Geese are now happy. Turkey's not so much. <laughs> Scrooge's generosity, it, it just didn't stop there. There were these two men who in the story had come to his office and had asked for a donation for the poor and he had given them nothing. Now he tracks them down and gives them a growing generosity. He wants to make a difference. He goes around saying, Merry Christmas. Something has happened to him that changes him. Now, I've seen different versions of a Christmas carol, but, but only in one that I've seen does it pick up on a line that, that Dickens uses to describe the ongoing transformation of Scrooge. Dickens puts it in four simple words. He went to church. In the 1999 Scrooge that featured Patrick Stewart on TNT, they, they actually show Scrooge going into church Singing Christmas carols. All Dickens said was, he went to church. Maybe he just assumed we, we would know what that meant. You see, once you begin to tie into the generous spirit of Christmas, you discover the source of all generosity. You, you move beyond the hype and, and you kind of rediscover the hope. And that opens our hearts to respond to live out of all the good that, that, that God desires uh, to give us. In the closing pa paragraph of A Christmas Carol, it says that Scrooge was better than his word. He became like a second father to Tiny, Tiny Tim. He became as good a friend, as good a master, as good a man, as the good old city knew or any good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. He knew how to keep Christmas well. We are invited to do that as well, to, to keep Christmas well. Paul tells us in Titus 3, verse 8, this is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things, that, that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. When, when Paul says that, that we devote ourselves to doing good, it's, it's not to earn God's love. It's simply to express joy in the generosity of what we received. It's an invitation to keep Christmas well all year. A couple of year, a weeks ago, I, I told a story about a, a man who was taking down his Christmas decorations, and he had taken them down, and a friend came over and saw that, that one was on the mantle. He wasn't sure whether he should say something or not, and his friend said, Oh, I, you're wondering about that? I said, I decided a couple years ago, every year at the, when I put the decorations away, I would keep one out J just to remind me to remember that Christmas is not just for a day, but it's for all my days. I've decided to do that as well this year. Uh, this is my favorite Christmas decoration right there on the tree. My wife and I made that when we were dating. Actually, she made most of it. She was a fifth grade Sunday school teacher. She was making a gift for her kids. She cut out the pattern, sewed, put in the whatever you put in there to make it stick out a little. Batting, I think that's called. Uh, she cut out the manger scene. She had some hay and glue. My job was to glue in the hay and then the manger over that. And it used to have more hay and I used to have more hair. <laughs> and after it comes off our tree, I'm going to put it in my study at home. To, simply to remind me that Christmas isn't just this day or this weekend or this season, but that Christmas is God with us in every day, in every season, in, in every situation. That the God who's been with us in 2017 is a God who already knows what's coming in 2018. And that his great love for us will never leave us nor forsake us. That his great love will, will always be there for, for you and for me to develop, to grow as his people. 
Unlike an unused gift card, I, I, I just want to remember Christmas. God's work in your life and in my life. We, we place our gifts, this is the beauty of Christmas, we place our gifts under a tree, and God placed his gift on a tree. Jesus giving his life for you and for me. At one point in Jesus' life, he says this in Matthew chapter 10, freely you have received, freely give. That, that's the beauty of what Christ gives. What you get from God, you give to others. What he blesses you with, you, you share with others. Whether it's encouragement or time or finances or whatever he might do. This year at Christmas, as we've done the last few years, uh, we are giving the Christmas offering we're about to take away. We call it Christ Gives. It's on the, if you have a bulletin, it's on the inside cover. If you don't have a bulletin, we were abundantly blessed today in what we thought attendance would be. We just weren't sure who was going to come on Christmas Eve morning. Thank you for being here. There are four recipients of the offering we will receive in our three services today and our one service tomorrow. Two of them deal with education around the world. One is in Myanmar with the, the Kachin Christian School. Another is in Argentina with the Suarefugio School. But both of those will help not just in building facility, but in helping students attend. The other two groups that we're giving our Christmas offering to uh, are in the San Diego area. One of them is called Generate Hope. It, it deals with the issue of sexual human trafficking uh, right here in San Diego, of helping people get, get out of the horror of that experience and finding new hope and a, a new path of life. And the third one is the East County Transitional Living Center that, that helps those who, for whatever reason, have fall, fallen into homelessness to kind of reconnect with where they could be in life, to find a job skill, to, to find a place to live, to find a Savior who loves them. Gifts are given to be used. I hope this Christmas you, you experience the joy of giving and in getting, but especially in the gift of a Savior who comes and, and gives generously to you and to me. And uh, as we give this day, we give in thanksgiving to Him. Let's first go to Him in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for being our generous God. As we celebrate this day, make our celebration of Christmas last a lifetime with all that Christ gives. As Christ gives, so we give this day to help others to not only hear the story of Christmas, but to be part of Christmas' ongoing story each day of love, hope, generosity, and peace. Holy Spirit, lead us to keep Christmas well, to keep Christmas daily, and to keep Christmas generously. Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you for all that you give, especially the gift of being born anew in our hearts this day. And all God's people said, amen. amen. So, so like one announcement, and if you're hungry, you'll love this one. Uh, down in our courtyard area, so if you exit out this way and go down the stairs, uh, there is coffee and there are donuts and then there are sugar cookies for kids to decorate. And I think you get to eat them right after that. Uh, so please be part of that. Uh, we are about to gather our offering as that happens. If you would like to give, if God's kind of leading you to give and, and you just didn't come prepared to do that, you can give online at ChristLaMesa.org. There's a special line when you click on the giving button that will say Christmas Offering 2017. Uh, as we gather our gifts, we ask if you have a connection card that you fill that out and you pass that to the diagonal aisles uh, out here. We continue now with the gathering of our gifts to God. <laughs> 